Good evening, everybody. Oops. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Channeling History. We're the only show where we speak to the souls that made things happen. I'm Barry Strom, your host, and I'll be doing the channeling tonight. And I'm Connie Strom, your co-host, and I would also like to welcome you to our show. Last week, we had a fun show with Johnny Cash, Kenny Rogers, and Jimmy Buffett. This very interesting show is available on our YouTube channel. It's in the name of Barry Strome and has over 580 videos. We're currently consolidating all of our broad audio broadcasts on a new platform named Podbean.com. Just go to the site and search Barry Strome. This week, we're going to channel with the famous conservative radio personality, Rush Limbaugh. Please feel free to submit any questions through the chat room. If there ever was a night where we need a disclaimer, it will probably be tonight. <clears throat> Our guest had what could best be described as very strong opinions in his lifetime. So, the opinions or statements voiced on our show are the channeled words of the spirits and do not necessarily reflect our opinions, those of the Parax Network, or of our sponsors. Now, before we channel, we also say a prayer of protection. And Connie's going to say the prayer, and we'll begin to channel with our spirit guests tonight. God, please grant us your wisdom and protection. Grant us the knowledge that we can handle and keep us safe from all things that will harm us. Keep the messages positive and pure love. Keep us safe from our egos. We ask these things in the light of the seen, the unseen, and the honesty of God. Amen. Our guest tonight, Rush Limbaugh, was born in 1951, and he passed in 2021. He was one of the most prominent conservative voices in the United States. In 2019, his radio show was the most listened to show in the country, with almost 16 million listeners. He was acknowledged to be the top talk radio show host in the country. And throughout his career, he was obviously no stranger to controversy. So, Rush, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you, Rush. Um, why did you choose conservatism? Well, when I was young, I could see what liberalism was, had done to our country. The Vietnam War, there were a lot of things that I disagreed with. I felt that if the liberals were allowed to continue to to govern our country, that there was almost no limit to what they could do in harming it. So I could be liberal or I could be more conservative. Keep in mind at the time, there were, there were very few true conservatives. I felt that the conservatives deserved a voice I wanted to go into radio, so I felt that talk radio was a way of the future. Keep in mind, back in those days, we had TV, AM, and FM, and that was about it. So I, I, I chose the route that I did. So that was the main reason that you chose a career in radio? I always wanted to be in radio. As a child, I used to play at being a radio a newspaper person on the radio. It was, it was just something that was in my blood, I guess. I know that it, I did, wasn't on the radio in prior lives because it didn't exist. But I wanted, I truly wanted to be a, a broadcaster. My parents bought me toy radios that I could practice on. And... I decided that I wanted to make a career of it. Rush, what do you consider the most dangerous political activist movement? Today, there are many of them. As I watch and I see some of the Muslim demonstrations that are taking place in the country, the supposedly pro-Palestinian individuals. Many of those are simply terrorists in hiding. I think that 
if violent shows of strength for the Palestinians are allowed to continue, that the violence will simply grow. There are far left organizations in the country, and yes, there are far right organizations as well. And any extreme group I see as a danger to our country, be it right or left. You made many controversial race-related statements regarding African Americans. Were you a racist? I am sorry to say that in certain areas I did feel certain attitudes that would be considered racist. I felt that much of the good that had been done for the Afro-American people in this country was being taken advantage of by Afro-Americans. I felt that there were places like colleges where it was not where whites were not on an equal footing with the Afro-Americans. And I did indeed at times reflect that in some of my comments. But I want you to know that once you are over here, everyone is equal. There are no black skins. There are no white skins. We are simply energies, and God has provided the great equality exists over here. When you're on the planet Earth, you're given many choices. And sadly, through the years, Afro-Americans were taken into slavery they were abused, they were not given equal rights, and that was all wrong. But in many instances, I felt that equality was like a pendulum that swings from one side to the other. And the higher that a pendulum is lifted, the more velocity it has as it carries to the other side. And there is often overreach by those that are trying to do good. So yes, I did feel that there were times that the pendulum might have swung too far in the other direction. And it is something that I'm sorry for. What is your opinion of the welfare state in our country? <laughs> do not get me started on this one. <laughs> I consider welfare as a very important safety net. I want to be very clear on that. But there are many people today that are taking very much advantage of the welfare system. The far left has made it very easy for people to cheat on welfare. There are individuals that collect it that should not be, and there are individuals that should be collecting it that are not allowed to participate in the programs. The politicians are using welfare as a way of buying votes. Especially in the cities, you will see politicians promising huge welfare checks. You will see them making promises that the poor individuals people of low income, will be given freebies, will be given food stamps, will be given many, many things to help them get along. I always felt that the money should be given towards helping individuals earn a living. Welfare should not be a freebie. There should be strings attached. The individual to receive welfare should 
have to take courses to better themselves to earn a living. There are people that are on welfare all their lives, and that should not be. There should be time limits. They should be, there should be help in finding them work. Welfare should be a temporary thing. But there are many individuals that have made it a way of life. You stated Latin American immigration will cause a collapse of representative democracy. Will you explain that? Yes, and this is very appropriate. Every country has got to control its borders. If it doesn't, it loses all control. You have to know that the people coming into a country are educated to the extent that they can speak the country's language, that they can find employment, that they can pay taxes, that they can do all of the things that an ordinary citizen of a country should do. When you allow unrestricted entrance into a country, you are inviting disaster. The huge number of individuals coming in represent the potential for it to be a voting block. If you let millions of people come into this country and those people are not interested in the welfare of the country, but are only interested in their own welfare, they can create a voting block that influences the politicians to doing things that favor that minority group but that hurt the population at large. If you don't control the individuals coming into a country, you have no idea if you're letting terrorists in, if you're allowing spies from other countries. There is an incredible amount of danger that is crea created by unregulated immigration. What do you think when you watch what's happening at the Mexican border today? It sickens me. I cannot imagine that anyone in their right mind would allow such unrestricted immigration. You're seeing individuals from all different countries entering the border, not just Latin American countries. You're seeing people from Iraq, from Iran. You are seeing individuals from countries that hate us. You are seeing gang members coming in. You are seeing unrestricted drug flow. Fentanyl is coming in from Mexico in quantities that would be great enough to kill everyone in this country. The paramount thing for the good of this country is to regain control over immigration. Now that you're on the other side, do you still believe reducing the marginal tax rates on the wealthy would increase production? No, I've changed my mind about that. I'm seeing corporations that are paying no income tax. I'm seeing individuals of incredible wealth that take advantage so that they pay very little in taxes. Now, there are individuals that pay their fair share of taxes, but many today are using the tax benefits that politicians have given them to accumulate incredible wealth. And portions of that wealth are often kicked back to the politicians that have altered the tax laws. So I do feel that individuals of greater wealth should be taxed accordingly. What's your current opinion of social media? Social media is mostly controlled by members of the left. You're seeing social media being manipulated so that it controls elections, so that it controls individuals that when 
primaries, you are about to see one of the greatest social media manipulations and attempts at controlling elections that you will ever witness. The upcoming presidential election will not hopefully be controlled by the lies that you'll see on social media. The government is reluctant to make any controls at this time because obviously the left is controlling government. So social media will pretty much be allowed to do what they want to do. And there are incredibly wealthy people that are controlling social media at this time. What's your opinion of artificial intelligence? With many people that are controlling our government, artificial intelligence would at least give them some intelligence. The people that control government are incapable of controlling the incredible knowledge and abilities that computers are going to have in the future. There will be many instances where artificial intelligence will be used to manipulate the voting public. There will be many instances where artificial intelligence will, use, will be used to create great wealth for individuals. The question of how you manipulate artificial intelligence and control it is incredibly complex. I do not think that any of our politicians in either party are capable of the intellect required to understand exactly what artificial intelligence will mean in the future. So then you don't believe that artificial intelligence should be controlled by the government? I do not think that our government is capable of controlling it in an intelligent fashion. Artificial intelligence is going to be used to eliminate many, many jobs. It will create large amounts of unemployment. The government should be ahead of what will take place. They should be training individuals for different jobs. Many manual jobs are being taken away by artificial intelligence. You see it even in the fast foods today. When you go in, there are very few that have people standing behind the counter. The people that used to stand behind the counter are probably looking for employment at this time. This is going to take place in production lines in many, many areas that do research because the computer will do what humans have done in the past. So how do you stop computers from taking over much of the employment in the world? I'm not sure that I have the answer to that. And I'm sure that if I don't, your politicians don't either. So you don't have any idea how it should be controlled? I think Is that, that I, th I think that there have to be study groups, real, honest to God, neutral study groups, people from the technical industry, people that work with high-end computers, and there have to be economists that understand the true implications. So I would not be capable of doing it, but if the proper groups are put together and make the proper recommendations, and if the politicians have the nerve to follow those recommendations, that it would be possible, but it is highly improbable. In life, what was your opinion of the HIV AIDS epidemic? 
I was very negative towards it. I hate to admit it, but I was biased towards members of the gay community. It, their way of life was opposed to some of my beliefs. I think that it was overblown in many ways. I think the drug companies used it to make great profits. I think that if there ever was an epidemic that it that could be controlled, that that was it. But yes, I, I, I definitely did in life show negativity towards that towards their community. Has that opinion changed now that you're on the other side? Yes, it has. Now that I'm on the, on the other side, I understand that that lifestyle is often a lesson that needs to be learned by a soul and that individuals that are not living that lifestyle must learn to control their own emotions and feelings towards those individuals. God teaches a great equality. And when you're showing negativity towards any inherent group, you're not following the commands of God. That is correct. In life, what was your opinion about the legalization of drug use? And has that opinion changed now that you're on the other side? No, and this is a very difficult subject for me to t speak about. I became addicted to painkillers because of back surgery. So I was addicted. I was relying on these painkillers because of the surgery. I spoke out very vigorously against drug addiction. And I understood what I was going through. Drug addiction is an absolutely terrible thing. It was hypocritical of me to speak against addiction while I, while I was addicted. I went through rehab and I did my best to try to alleviate my addiction. But pain is very difficult to live with, especially acute pain. But that is no excuse for relying upon the drugs that kill the pain. And those drugs create many, many more problems for you. Fentanyl is a terrible thing today. It's coming across our border. Many people are addicted to drugs. It destroys families. It obviously kills people. It leads to depression. It increases medical expenses in the community. It does many, many things. Drug addiction has got to be addressed. The cities that have unlimited drug use now are learning a lesson. If you allow unlimited drug use, you are creating huge social problems. People have got to understand what they're doing to themselves. It's very difficult to legislate against illegal drug use. Because if people want to use those drugs, there's very little in reality the government can do. People have to be educated not to start drug use. They have to understand truly what's at stake for them. But yes, I spoke vigorously against drug use and I would continue to be doing it if I was still alive. You were quite negative towards environmental activists, referring to them as environmental wackos. Has your opinion changed concerning environmental issues? Somewhat. I know that there are so-called scientists out there that are overplaying the environmental problems. But there are also scientists and individuals that are underplaying them. 
we are polluting the planet. That is a simple fact. What I disagreed with were the individuals that were saying that it was an imminent calamity. There will be a time, if individuals don't respect the planet, that there will the terrible changes will take place. But climate change, for instance, there are major swings through the years in weather. And over the longer terms, you see climate change. Weather, the current weather train, trends that we're seeing is created by man or our natural fluctuations is a situation that's open for debate. Anyone that is telling you that the world will end in five years if we don't take major changes is lying to you. There are practical problems to making aggressive changes in what we do to protect the climate. India and China pollute in huge numbers until every country decides that they're going to participate in programs that are environmentally sound. Whatever we do is only going to be a partial solution. Tell us about your opinion on abortion. I am strictly against abortion. I think abortion is taking a life. Abortion is no different than giving you a permit to go out and kill a child. Once I got over here, I realized that I was correct in my opinions about abortion, that there is no way that God would ever tell you to go out and take a life. There are extenuating circumstances, such as rape, but, and trying to save the life of the mother, but the wholesale reliance upon abortion as birth control is truly against the teachings of God. You supported the idea that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Can you now state categorically that they had the weapons? They had not atomic weapons, but they did have weapons that used gas, which is considered a, a, a weapon of mass destruction. When they saw that war was imminent, they removed those weapons from country and destroyed them. So they did not have nuclear weapons, as I thought they did, but they did hide weapons of mass destruction, which were mainly weapons that were outlawed through the ages and consisted of of gases. What's your opinion of the Obama presidency? The Obama presidency laid the foundation for many of the problems that we have today. The incredible spending that you're seeing had much of its foundation in the Obama presidency. That is not to say that the Bush administration didn't overspend because they did. But Obama did many things that laid the foundation for many of our problems that we're seeing. What is your opinion of the Affordable Care Act? There is nothing affordable about the Affordable Care Act. It just push dollars from one category to another. It still allows the pharmaceuticals to rape the American public with their prices. Drug prices in the United States are some of the highest in the world. It did not 
truly create cheap and cheap insurance for individuals. It needed and still needs major re revamping. It is not a plan that can succeed in the long run. Rush, how would you save Social Security? First of all, Social Security should not be having the problems that it's having. The politicians created the parameters of stealing the funds. Now you're in a position that you have many, many people using Social Security as their entire form of savings. There, have to be a, there has to be a government plan to effectively stimulate individuals to plan for their own retirement. Social Security should be considered as a supplement. I would raise the age requirements and I would try to get individuals to do their own retirement planning. In addition, I would assure that every country or every individual that is working in this country and corporation is required to pay into Social Security. I would assess additional fees on large corporations that are making huge profits and I would put those into a fund that cannot be touched. And I would allow bonds to be drawn against those funds and the profits from those bonds would go into the fund and help to preserve the monies that are in it. How do you assess the current risks China poses for the United States? I believe that China is the greatest risk to the United States in the long term. While Russia is saber-rattling, they will create situations of spending that will destroy their economy. Within 10 years, if Russia does not stop spending all their money on their military, they will simply be a third world country. China has economic problems. And those economic problems, if they come to fruition, can help to delay China in what they're trying to do to control the world. But we have to realize that China is our enemy. The United States has to wean itself off of cheap China goods. We are the main support with the other countries of the free world in buying China's products. The Chinese economy is weak, and if we were to slow our purchases of those cheaply made items, their economy would force them to change their outlook, at least in the near term. Will China attack Taiwan? I do not believe China is going to attack Taiwan because of their current economic problems. China has to be able to feed an immense number of people. And they created problems for themselves with their one child edict. Population growth slowed through that edict and now they are trying to have more children 
they're promoting larger families, but there will be a large gap, even though there are so many people in China, their population growth will not sustain the spending programs that they are currently initiating. So what do you see as the future for China? I think that China will continue to try to build their military as long as they can. They will bluster about Taiwan, but I think that internal pressures will maintain control over them, at least in the near term. What happens to China will be determined by how the democracies, democracies of the world treat China. Embargoing the sales from China can be the strongest weapon that can be used against them. What do you see as the future for Russia? There will be a time that the people of Russia will tire of the living conditions that the Putin government is forcing upon them. When you have a country as large as Russia, where 20% of the people don't even have running water in their homes, yet they are spending billions upon billions upon their military, that the members of their military are being killed at a huge rate and not returning home, that they do not have manpower to man the industries that are required to give a substantial way of life to the people, that there will be a time that there will be major change in Russia. That is a time when the democracies have got to step in and give guidance. In my mind, the only true change to Russia will come when they, when that huge country is broken into smaller portions or smaller, or the smaller parts of Russia become independent and come to the West for better standards of living. What is your opinion about the United States supplying military aid to Ukraine? I think that it is one of the most critical things that they can do in order to assure the, the future demise of Russia. It is only when the people become so uncomfortable in Russia that they throw out the leadership that you will have a chance. When that happens, the democracies have got to try to guide the countries, the smaller portions that are remaining, into democratic styles of government. And that is when the West needs to step in and assure those people that they can have better standards of living. How do you analyze Putin at this time? Putin is insane for power. He wants to be known as Peter the Great of modern times. Putin is all in on this military expenditure. He will destroy his country through it. The only way he can win is if the West tires and does not support Ukraine. I'm very disappointed in the United States right now because they are holding up this, their military support. They're causing great damage to Ukraine. And if they do not wake up, as it seems as though countries in Europe are waking up, Russia will have a very good chance to defeat Ukraine. And if they do, they will invade other countries. Do you think he will attack NATO in the future? If NATO proves to be weak, he will. Right now you're seeing splits in NATO. You're seeing individual countries that are weakening in their support. If 
countries weaken in their support, it can be this actually destroy NATO. And if that takes place, you could, are guaranteeing that Russia will attack many many of the smaller countries that cannot defend themselves. You were a supporter of Donald Trump. What do you think of him running for president this time? I was a strong supporter of Trump. And I think that basically he was had a very successful presidency. We were not involved in wars. He had controlled immigration. He made mistakes. He truly didn't understand the mentalities of many of the stab you in the back politicians. I believe that it is questionable that he should be running for this second term. Some of his policies seem to have changed and I hope that he understands that a strong NATO is required. If you do not stop warring countries such as Iran and Russia in Europe, there will be a time that our guys will be fighting them. He seems to have allowed his ego to get in front of some of his wise decisions that he made in the past. I think that he can be an effective president, but I think that all will come down to who he chooses for his close advisors. What is your opinion of President Biden? President Biden definitely shows sign of aging and dementia. The image that he is portraying for the country is very dangerous. The world sees that he is not capable of the stresses and strains of truly running the presidency. I think that many of his advisors are actually controlling the major decisions. And I do not think that that is healthy for the country. I do not understand why he wants to run for a second term. I know that there are many that are very worried about his age. And I think that it is a very appropriate worry. What's your opinion of the current Republican Party? I'm very disappointed in the current Republican Party. They are very split. They cannot compromise among themselves for efficient government. They are losing seats in the House of Representatives to the point that they are very close to losing the majority. There are very far right groups that are destroying any hope of compromise. Compromise between both parties has got to be accomplished for the good of the country. What is taking place in government is a deadlock. We are seeing a leader of the Republican Party in the House that is so fearful of maintaining his control that he is not bringing votes to the floor that he should be bringing. He is weakening the Ukraine with his decision making. I think that the Republican Party needs young leadership. I think that the party should have term limits for its own politicians that are holding seats of power within the, the party that themselves. I do not believe that it is the effective party 
than it was when I supported them. What's your opinion of the current Democrat Party? I think that they have been taken over by the left liberal wing of the party. And basically what we are seeing is that they have the ability to destroy our country. Just look at the southern border. They've allowed millions of people to come in to the country. The president will do whatever the liberals want him to do. And, and the extremes of both parties are capable of destroying our country. Do you think Biden will be the candidate on the Democrat ticket this election? In my opinion, he should not be the candidate. And I know that there are many others that share that opinion. He is president, and if he decides to run, he will run. Uh, in 2001, you lost your hearing. How did this affect your life? In the beginning, it was devastating. Imagine a talk show radio host that could not hear the people that were his guests on, the, on, the, on his show. Hearing is incredibly important when, you're in, when you were in my business. I consider the medical procedure that saved my hearing an act of God. And I was so appreciative when I got much of my hearing back and I could proceed. But it was only through this amazing procedure that it took place. Uh, could you go into more detail about what it's like being addicted to painkillers that might help people in the future decide against them? Painkillers seem like it's the only answer. I know I was taking more than you can imagine. I became a, totally addicted to them in that if I did not have them available, I was mentally incapacitated to a great extent by, by the pain. It is a very difficult situation when an individual is in critical pain and cannot find relief from it. it pain can destroy your life, but note I said can. Drugs will destroy your life. When you make the decision to become addicted to drugs, you are making a decision that will eventually destroy your life. It may be through your own actions. It may be through depression or suicide. But there is never a good ending for individuals that are truly addicted to drugs. Rush, what was your belief in God? I always believed in God. I felt that God was a conservative. I knew that you had to take people, that you had to be good to them, that there had to be safety nets. But I also knew that there were many people that had to be protected. God is absolute. Now that I'm over here, I can assure you that God exists and that his powers are many and beyond your comprehension. When my hearing was restored, I considered it an act of God. It was an amazing thing when I could hear again. So I felt that God wanted me to continue. And I can assure you that a strong foundation in God is incredibly important for you. Yes. How were you judged when you returned to heaven? I had made some mistakes and I was judged for them. I had done a lot of charity work in my life. I had given a lot of money to different military charities, to tunnels, tunnel to towers, to many great organizations. 
and I was very well judged for that. I had, with my strong opinions, created some, uh, and I'm using the word advisedly, some animosities that I probably should have avoided, and they pointed that out to me. But all in all, I think that my judgment was very fair. I was allowed to advance a bit, and that's all you can expect. What would you tell our listeners about the dangers of smoking? I loved smoking. In my mind, there was nothing better than a good cigar. However, I died of lung cancer. So, obviously, smoking kills. If you make the decision that you're going to take the momentary enjoyment of smoking, you have to weigh it against the proof that it will probably kill you. If I had not smoked, I would still be there speaking. So I'm very sorry now that I did not listen to my doctors, but it's a decision, a personal decision you make for yourself and you stand an understanding of what will happen if you smoke. It will kill you prematurely. If there was one thing in your human life that you could change, what would that be? Smoking. I would not have, I would not have become a heavy smoker. And if I had done that, I'm sure that I would still be around. What do you consider the greatest mistake you made during your life as Rush Limbaugh? I think that I should, should have been less divisive. It would have been possible to take some of my opinions and not to have alienated as many people as I did. There were many people that truly hated me for, <coughs> for my opinions. I could have been a little more gentle. Do you see any hope for the inner cities? Under the current political programs, no. The politicians only want to take advantage of the poor in the cities and they're using them to make money from the programs that they come up with. It will not be until there's almost a complete remake of the politicians in power that there's any hope for the inner cities. If you were president, how would you handle the war in Europe? If I was president, I would give all of the weapons that Ukraine needs to immediately defeat Russia. I would not give them nuclear weapons, but I would give them the power to destroy the Russian military. Once his military is destroyed, he will have no excuse for not terminating the war. Who do you consider the greatest risk to our country? Russia, China, or Iran? China. Iran is a risk, but they can be controlled and they are certainly not as powerful as China. China has the ability to grow incredibly. If they were smart about what they were doing, they would be able to truly undermine many of the democracies, and they would be able to have a military that would be truly feared. Indecision in our military could strengthen China beyond any control. Now that you're on the other side, you can see the truth as to what happened in the last presidential election. Was it an honest election? There were, nothing took place that could have changed the outcome of the election. Biden had plenty of leeway there were votes that were tampered with, but in relation to the overall number of votes cast, it was not significant. What's your opinion of the current Supreme Court? I like the current Supreme Court. Of course, they have a, a conservative bent, so that would make me very, very happy. Rush, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Do you have a final message for our listeners? Yes.
First of all, thank you for allowing me to speak. I never thought that I would get to be able to speak to the people again. So this is a real treat. The people of the United States have got to wake up. They have to understand that they will truly get the government that they vote for. Politicians all lie to you, Democrat or Republican. You have to sort out the best. Get young, talented people into positions of power in government. Use Vote for individuals from the military. Do not listen to the lies that you're told. Try to sort out the truth. Elect the very best that you can do that. That is the only way the country is going to survive. Maintain the traditions of freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Do not tamper with the Supreme Court. Let the policies that select the justices continue in the way they are. Generally, do what is best for your country. Love it. There is no better country than the United States in the world. Do not ever let that change. So thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I appreciate it. And if you allow me to come back, I would certainly do it. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Thank you so much, Rush. Excellent, excellent session. Uh, next week, we're going to channel with three founding fathers and discuss what is taking place in the United States today with them. Our guests will be the spirits of Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and George Washington. I'm dying to hear their opinions of what they see going on. Connie and I have started a new podcast. It's called Hello Heaven. We broadcast it on YouTube and Facebook Live Fridays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. The audio is available on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Alexa, and most other platforms. My 10th book, Modern Messages of the Archangel, is now available as a video, as, as an audio book. Uh, it's available on Amazon. You can buy it in paperback, hardcover, ebook, and audio book as of now. Signed copies of any of my books are available on our website, barrystrom.com. Thank you all for joining us tonight on Channeling History. This week we tried to bring you a conversation with one of the most controversial personalities of the 21st century. We always try to bring you the truth about history by speaking to the souls that lived the events. That's the only way that we can make progress in the future, by understanding the mess and mistakes that we made in the past. Okay. All of our shows are available on our YouTube channel, as we know. It's in my name, Barry Strome. Anything that's over, there's around 600 videos there, so you can find information on anything you're looking for. So thank you for listening. Please join us Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Parax Radio Network.